Welcome to the final episode of Let's Build a Thermal Power Plant series in Minecraft and we are going to wrap this entire build up by covering the heat exchangers, the cooling towers and finally the entire piping network that you are seeing below me. Now immersive technologies, cooling towers and heat exchangers work a bit differently than they do in HBMs as you will find out in this video. All of the important links are in the description below and there are video chapters. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Heat exchangers and cooling towers are going to be placed between the cobblestone generator and the turbine hall. So in order to mark the first point, in order to make a rectangle, I am going to use the intersecting lines from the turbine hall and from the fuel factory. So once you have that intersecting point, mark it with the physical hazard block from industrial renewal and convert it into a 33 long line. Now once you have the 33 long line, convert this line into a 53 by 33 rectangle. Now this rectangle is going to be parallel to our turbine hall. There we go. Now we need to divide this rectangle into two parts like we did the turbine hall. And this division is going to come along the width of the rectangle. So draw out a 33 long line of physical hazard blocks in order to divide the entire rectangle into two equal halves. And finally replace all of the sandstone blocks in the middle with concrete blocks from HBM. And once this is done, we are ready to make our heat exchanger and cooling towers. Now before we can even make anything, first things first, we need to get the exhaust steam out from the turbines. These turbines when fed with steam, will convert that steam into the exhaust steam. And that exhaust steam will come out from the alternator side. So connect two of the turbines like this and make sure that these are the outer turbines and run a pipe along parallel to the turbine, bring it three out and three up. And finally, to the edge of the factory like this. There we go. Now for the turbines that are on the other side of the heat exchanger, we cannot run a pipe to the outside. So we are going to run a pipe along the middle. So bring it out like this. Make sure that two pipes are not interconnecting. And finally, bring it up like we did the other pipe. All of these pipes are going to bring out the exhaust steam from the turbines. So connect them in pairs of two like this. I am going to speed this footage up. Just what you have to remember is that the turbines which are closer to the heat exchanger side, they will get the pipes from the outside and the turbines which are farther away, they will get the pipes from the middle. Like I am doing here right now. All right. So those are eight turbines done. Therefore, we have four pipes. Repeat this same process for the remaining eight turbines as well. And you will get four more pipes totaling up to eight. And once the entire process is done, you will have eight pipes coming along the side of the heat exchanger and the cooling tower. Now we can start marking the areas for heat exchangers and the cooling towers. So from the diagonal, come out by three blocks and place three diagonal blocks like this and then make a line of five blocks. Leave a one block gap and then make another line of five blocks. Now convert this into a five by seven rectangle. So now we have two five by seven rectangles which are three blocks diagonal and repeat the same process on the opposite side. So once you have repeated this process, you will have total four rectangles, leave a three block gap and paste those four rectangles again in order to get total eight rectangles, all measuring five by seven. These are going to be our eight heat exchangers. Now in order to mark the point for our cooling towers, they are going to be 11 by 11. So run parallel to the heat exchangers, leave a one block gap from the edge and make an 11 by 11 square. Now make another square leaving a one block gap in front of it. There we go. So now that we have two 11 by 11 squares, just repeat the same process for the remaining heat exchangers as well. And make sure that these cooling towers will be running parallel to the heat exchangers. Once you have repeated the process, 
you will have markings for 8 heat exchangers and 4 cooling towers like this. In order to place them, you will need the heat exchanger projector and the cooling tower projector. Remember that you can rotate this using the middle mouse button. And once you do rotate it, shift right click in order to place it, which will work in creative. And make sure that the redstone engineering block is facing you. In a similar manner, place down all of the remaining heat exchangers as well. There we go. By the way, direction does matter in this build, so yeah, be very careful about where you place and in which orientation you place. Now for the cooling towers, make sure that the heavy engineering block is facing you, like this, and place down four cooling towers, so we can start forming them. Now that we have our four cooling towers, in order to form them, we are going to need the engineer's hammer. So take your engineer's hammer and on the heat exchanger, click on the block beside the redstone engineering block. And that will form the heat exchanger. As for the cooling tower, just right click on the heavy engineering block and your cooling tower will be formed. Once completed, it is going to look something like this. And in order to clean this entire build up, replace all of the marking blocks that you placed with HBM concrete or the or any block that you are using in order to make this build. I am using concrete so I am going to replace it with that. Before starting the piping work, I want to quickly show you guys how heat exchangers are supposed to work so that it doesn't get very confusing when there are a lot of pipes laying around. So heat exchangers have total 4 slots. There are 2 input slots, one on the top and one on the bottom and there are 2 output slots, same, one on the top and one on the bottom. The topmost input slot is where the exhaust steam from the turbines is going to go. And as for the other input slot, which is on the bottom, that is where water is going to go. Now let's talk about the output. From the bottommost output slot, hot spring water is going to come out, which is going to go into the cooling tower. And from the topmost block or the topmost output block, distilled water is going to come out. So now in order to form the connections, extend the very first pipe and bring it all the way back to the last heat exchanger. And as I told you, this pipe is going to be connected to the topmost input slot. So connect it like this. And with this, the very first pipe is done. Now for the other pipes, run it parallel to the very first pipe that we extended. And right now, don't worry about the pipes getting connected. In order to disconnect them, use the engineer's hammer on the joints that you don't want. And do this process slowly because you don't want to disconnect any pipe themselves otherwise the exhaust team won't have anywhere to go now repeat the same process for the remaining two heat exchangers as well and i am saying it again take your time in doing this as this piping system is pretty important so with the final heat exchanger done these are the four connections made. Now, in a similar way, make the remaining four connections as well. Just make sure to leave a one block gap between the pipes so that you can distinguish which connections are for the front one and which ones are for the back one. So extend four pipes like this and bring it all the way back. And coming here, just make sure to leave a one block gap. And now the process is going to be the same as we did for the other heat exchangers. And finally, we have completed the process for all of the heat exchangers. Now the entire exhaust steam system is going into them. Now come to the center of the heat exchanger line. So it will be three blocks in, one, two, and three, and come all the way back to the hazard line. Here, start digging out a seven by seven square. And this square should be going towards the heat exchanger. 
Here we are going to make our power system and the water system as heat exchangers and cooling towers require water and power to work. Now that you have a 7 by 7 square, make it too deep in total and then we can start placing our thermoelectric generators. So make a system of 9 by 9 generators and cover them all up with lava and packed ice. I have done this process before, so yeah, it's pretty simple. Just make sure to place them in an alternate manner so that every alternate face has opposite temperature blocks. Once you have done that, take your industrial floor from immersive or sorry industrial renewal and cover all of the thermoelectric generators like this. Now once we have placed the industrial floor inside them, connect all of the thermoelectric generators using cables. When you right click the floor with a cable, the cable is placed inside it. And as we are going to place water on the top, we needed some sort of base. That is why we are using the floor. And as for the remaining space, fill it up with floor as well. Just make sure that you don't destroy any lava block like I did right here. Once all of the floor is placed, cover the entire place up with concrete like before and we are ready to make our water system and place down our pumps. There we go. Now leave a two block gap from the center and make a five by two rectangle. So four and five. This is a five by two rectangle right here and fill this entire place up with water. Now we need to place down eight pumps. So place them down in pairs, two on one side, or oh sorry, four on one side and four on the other side like this. Now from the middle, dig out two blocks like this and you will see that the cable ends here. So extend the cable by one more block and then place down two more industrial floor blocks and bring out the cable from the last block like this. In here, place down an energy breaker and make sure that it is facing in the right direction. The arrow should be going from the cables towards the pumps. Now we need to connect all of the pumps. So connect them in pairs like this. And finally, making sure that the cable is going on top of the pumps like this. We have made the connection. Flicking the energy breaker will turn on all of the pumps. So that's a water system done. Now connect all of the pumps on the top using fluid pipes from immersive engineering. And finally, we are ready to pump the cooling towers with hot spring water and also water. The hot spring water will go on the side on the red and the water will go on the side which is blue. So yeah, there are two inputs and these two inputs are for hot spring water and water. So connect the heat exchangers, two of them, which are on the behind and extend a pipe. This pipe is going to bring our hot spring water into the very first cooling tower that we have here. So connect it on the side, which is red, which is this side right here. Now do the same for the other cooling tower, which is, oh sorry, the other heat exchanger as well. And there we go. Now for, for the front heat exchangers, connect them and get rid of any unnecessary connection and bring them back into the second cooling tower. And for the last pair, a similar process, just make sure that your pipes are not interconnecting. There we go. So that's all of the hot spring water input done. Now let's take care of the water input for the heat exchangers and the cooling towers. Heat exchangers will accept water from the bottommost input slot. So connect two of the heat exchangers like this and get rid of any unnecessary joint that has formed. Now once the pipes are connected in an unobstructed manner, make sure to connect them to our pump system. So that's one pair of heat exchangers done. Repeat the same process for all of the remaining heat exchangers as well. And make sure to slow this video down at any point that you think that it is going too fast. 
as there was a lot of piping work to be done i had to speed this footage up all right so that's all of the heat exchangers connected with the pump system in order to input water now let's do the same for the cooling towers as well the another input slot remaining which is the blue side is going to be the water side so connect the first cooling tower like this and then all of the other ones as well just make sure that you don't mess up the red and the blue side there are two input sides red and blue red one will accept the hot spring water from the heat exchangers and the blue side will accept water from the pump system now the only messy cooling tower will be this one like it will have pipes running in the opposite direction other than that all of the cooling towers will have pretty easy piping system and that's done and now we are ready for the output systems for the heat exchanger and the cooling towers so the first output of the heat exchanger is going to be distilled water and this distilled water we are going to take it into a fluid tank from industrial renewal so place down a fluid tank in between of the two heat exchangers and connect all of the topmost output slots using pipes distilled water can be used in the solar tower or another machines like you can find a use for it in the manual but for now we have no use of distilled water so we are just going to store it in a tank so that's both of the pipes done they will bring the distilled water into this tank where it will be stored now for storing the output of the cooling towers which is going to be only normal water i'm going to make another tank and connect all of the output sites which are these orange sites that you can see here and bring them into the tank so take pipe all the way up like this and as for the remaining two towers connect the back side making sure that all of the connections are unobstructed this build is a pretty long one but it adds so much to the entire look of the factory or the entire plant that we have built so once all of the outputs are connected bring it to the tank and with this we are done most of the piping work is now complete all that remains is powering the heat exchangers so connect all of the heat exchangers with cables from industrial renewal and then we are going to connect it to the power system of the pump that we made before there we go now connect both of the wires like this and connect it to this wiring system here and as soon as you connect them you will see that the heat exchangers will completely fill up their internal buffer of energy all right so we are ready to test this system start the pump and that will fill up water in the internal buffer of the cooling tower and the heat exchangers and now that our boilers are full of steam we can start pumping this steam into the turbines so that it will start producing exhaust steam now as soon as you start the turbines it is going to take some time before they can reach their maximum energy output and at that output it will start producing exhaust steam so there we go we have reached the maximum output and now the cooling towers will start doing their work looks beautiful doesn't it so now that the cooling towers are doing their work we should be getting water and distilled water in two of the tanks that we placed before like this now you can do whatever you want with this water so i hope you guys like this video if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out my dudes stay safe